your own welcome introduction. So that's available. Morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, the kickoff meeting for the Utah Lake Management Plan. Uh, my name is Dave Epstein. This is Jacob and Jacob's engineering consultant team. I've got to meet a lot of you a couple weeks ago at the Many Public Authority Board meeting. Um, we appreciate everyone's attendance today, and, and I believe everyone has a copy of the agenda we put together that was sent out a couple of days ago, or maybe yesterday. And then um, there are some printed versions in the room if you, if you don't have one. Um, we may we have some main objectives for for this meeting really is to put together. Um, the planning team that we see is really crucial to help guide and work locally with the consultant team and, and putting together the management plan for the lake. Um, and we tried to set the stage for that in our in the board meeting a couple weeks ago. Um, and uh, hopefully we can really get close to establishing who that who will be participating in that planning team group here today. Um, Looking at the agenda, I have kind of some bullets here on the screen. Um, in a minute, maybe we can just do some introductions. I know there's a few new faces that weren't here at the board meeting. Um, go over the main roles and responsibilities for the main uh, groups involved in, in this project. I'm hoping Eric and potentially others from the board can talk to us a little bit about from the, uh, the Utah Lake Authority side, the background and vision for this project. Uh, and then, yeah, as I was I mean, just referring to, talk about that planning team and, and what that looks like, and we both we get um, a, a list together of individuals to participate in that group. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our scope of work that we um, went through somewhat broadly in our last meeting, um, getting into a little bit of the timeline and particularly with some of the initial tasks that we uh, have lined out for the coming months in the project. Uh, in terms of kind of just viewing the, the project from the project management standpoint, talk a little bit about um, risks and, and contingencies and, and executing the work and, and potentially get some input from, from you all and your thoughts related to that. Um, and spend a little time talking about one of the first subtasks would be kind of as part of the gap analysis, we need um, doing an accounting of what are all the projects, what are the management activities currently being done for Utah Lake. And we're going to want to work with you all and, and, and others to make sure that we're, we're capturing all that. Um, and then we'll end with talking about next steps. So I guess if we could do introductions, um, at a minimum, the name, affiliation, and uh, the interest that you may be representing, either on the Utah Lake Board or the Lake Authority Board or um, with the planning team, if that is what you're slated to be participating in. Um, Sam, you want to say? I'd be happy to. Um, I'm Sam Brager. I'm the programs manager for the Utah Lake Authority. Um, and I guess I represent the Utah Lake Authority <laughs> under Eric. So again, yeah, my name is Dave Epstein. I'm the Jacobs project manager. I've really working closely with Kayla Worthen to my right here um, as the project management team. I'm coordinating the, the Jacobs team and working closely with uh, the authority for the project management team um, and helping oversee the, the execution of, of the management plan. Morning, everyone. I'm Kayla. I'm the deputy project manager for this project, and my role is to support Dave in aspects of project management and then act as a liaison between the Utah Lake Authority Board, planning team, and the internal Jake's team. So, doing a lot of the coordination with our internal team um, and project management as well. Eric Ellis, Utah Lake Authority. Carolyn Lumber, Mayor of Linden City, and Lake Authority Board. Chris Carr, Circuit Springs City Council. Ben Steyerman, with the Division of Forestry Fire and State Lands, and I represent the Fair Union Board. I am Hillary Hungerford. I'm the Governor's appointee. 
And I'm John Mackey. I'm the director of the Division of Water Quality. I represent the Department of Environmental Quality. Did I say the Division of Environmental Quality? No, Water Quality. Department of Environmental Quality. And my interest, of course, is water quality and protecting the water quality. quality. <clears throat> Mazarin Air, I'm filling in for Merrick Homer for Vineyard City today. Isaac Paxman, Deputy Mayor of Provo, and Mayor Kavisi will be here. I'm her alternate on the board, but uh, Eric asked me to go ahead and look me to sit here anyway, and we should be here too. So uh, I, guess, I don't think we're sure yet who will be on the planning entity. We have a few folks joining virtually, right? Yes. One board member. I can jump in. So, Senator Mike McKell, appointed by the Utah State Senate. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm Soren Simonson, the executive director of the Jordan River Commission. We're uh, kind of a peer organization with the Utah Lake Commission, soon to be the Utah Lake Authority. Um, and uh, we represent about 40 different public agencies that are all partners of the Jordan River Commission, plus a number of business and nonprofit and stakeholder organizations. And <clears throat> as the largest tributary to the Jordan River, we're just really interested in everything happening around Utah Lake and uh, how we're closely connected as recreation and ecological systems. Scott David, the Division of Water Quality. I manage the uh, Water Quality Stream. Great. Thanks, everyone. Um, I guess, in terms of the seats that are not represented today, uh, we have talked about and Maybe getting ahead of myself a little in terms of the composition of the planning team. We had talked about having each member of the board potentially serve on the planning team or um, have someone else who's like represent them. Um, do, do you all feel that everyone kind of is tracking that and, and maybe suggesting either planning on participating or, or working on identifying some of the participants in the process? Yeah, certainly in our most recent board meeting that we made that request. And we should have somebody, we can send out an email and, and specifically request a name, whether that be the board member or their appointee uh, right after this meeting. Okay. Okay, great. When would we talk about? Any potential extras? Um, I think you know, in a little bit, yeah. Okay. Think we'll go there. Yeah. So, in thinking about this project and the, the main entities involved, um, we kind of line this out as you know, obviously, you know, Jacob's team was selected to complete this plan um, for the ULA, and as the consultant, that's our main role in the project is to develop the the management plan for the lake and envision ourselves working closely with um, the Utah Lake Authority project management team. And, and maybe that's, we've talked to Eric a little bit about, you know, he's he's our main board, point of contact. Maybe there'll be others from, or someone else from, from the board that would be want to be more involved in kind of their more day-to-day -day, um, interactions. Um, so we potentially can talk more about that. And then, we also would be um, interacting closely with the planning team and taking input and direction from, from that group. Um, so that the, the, the project management team from the Utah Lake Authority, um, their role being to oversee the consultant team and kind of report back to the to the rest of the ULA board. Um, so again, I don't know if Eric, we talked some about that and if that just kind of naturally over the course of the project there's some members of the board that are more interested in, in being involved on a day-to-day -day basis but at this point we're um, working with eric as the main point of contact 
Um, so the main role we view is for the, the board, the ULA board, is to to really approve and and you know, yeah, approve the conceptual and final management plans for for installing. Um, and they would be again working with the project management representation for the, for the board through the project. Um, and then the planning team um, would be, and again, I guess I keep hinting towards where we really want to talk about the details of the planning team getting there, but um, the planning team will really be guiding the development of the management plan, um, you know, mainly with the vision for, for the role of the Utah Lake Authority and the, um, the objectives and goals for Utah Lake and, and what the management plan will cover. Um, that group will review and provide in, input on interim deliverables as we're developing the plan. And yeah, again, we'll work at it most directly with the Jacobs Consent Committee. Is there any questions or, or maybe input on those general roles? I guess I'll ask one. So just to put you on the same page, that planning team, I think we talked about two half day meetings, emails in between. Mm -hmm. So any other input on how much time commitment we're talking about? Or it's, and it's we're done by October 31st next year, hopefully. Right. Anything else you would add to just the, the time commitment as that decision is made on who to designate? Anything else you'd say about is this you know a couple hours a week emails or you know, any, any best guesses? Yeah, I mean, I think for one, with the, some of the more intense work is a little bit front loaded with those, those workshops. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at holding those in December and January. Um, and yeah, those are likely half day um, with potential for additional time, depending on how those go. Um, and then in terms of the review and input on interim either work products or um, just I guess correspondence through the process. Um, it's a little hard to estimate. I wouldn't anticipate more than an hour, hour or two a week. You know, we're not talking about a lot of time day to day by any means. It's mostly involved in those workshops and then as we get close to developing you know, work products to, to make the bill to provide feedback in the universe. I can make sure that in the email we sent out to the board, we've got the details on that, Isaac, so that it'll be right in front of you to review. Yeah, maybe we can work with you on the same as the kind of expectations. But yeah. So that's the So I guess project background and don't want to put you on the spot for too much, particularly if the alignment's already been covered, but just thought this thing set the stage for us. I think from a back background standpoint, uh, what's most exciting is that the creation of the lake authority is really a, a, a a demonstration that the state has taken a serious approach to dedicating one entity with the coordination of all the management because there's a ton of different management activities taking place on the lake but it's to to create a body that can oversee and coordinate all of those efforts figure out what's missing and start uh to Put together an implement implementation plan that can address those management gaps that exist on the lake right now. We know that there's issues that that the lake is struggling with that really ought to be addressed so that it can be uh, delivering the the uses that that we hope and expect out of the lake, uh, especially with the population base as large as it is right next door to it. Uh, and all these folks that, that would love nothing more than to be able to utilize it as a recreational resource, as a natural resource, as a, as a beneficial fishery and, and these other uh, uses that it has. And so 
Yeah, that's that's more the, the background side of it. Um, is that we have this enormous natural resource in our valley that is very underutilized, and we'd like to kind of reach some of the potential that we know that it has. Uh, from a from a vision for this project in particular, what I'm really hoping is that no one is coming in uh, to the planning effort with with preconceived. This is how it should be. This is how it should be, but rather open mind, hey, this is this has been our wish list for a long time. Ben's worked on the lake for a long time. What what would be all the things that you'd love to see happen on the lake? Uh, whether there's things that you're going to work on in the future or things that uh, Director Mackey's going to work on in the future, let's get all of those items on the table. And then as part of this process, we can figure out who who takes care of those in the future. But let's let's really kind of focus on what does the lake need? Uh, what are the opportunities? And and then we can figure out how to make all of this happen. Uh, but but it's exciting to have an opportunity to to really kind of explore what we what we all individually would love to see in that lake and figure out ways to make those happen. So don't don't hold back. I guess is what I'm getting at. I would I would love for everyone to to really just feel comfortable. Uh, sharing your vision and and ideas on how we we arrive there uh, without feeling like we're going to judge because that's what Dave does not do. So. <laughs> uh, does that any, anything else that we should be focusing on? Uh, oh, and then and then generally, just to help clarify, we have two pieces to this management plan. We have our conceptual piece. And, and the idea behind that is that we have a, a concise document that's easy to reference for regular day-to-day -day use as the, as, as the coordinating agency. And then we will have a more comprehensive version of that that really dives into the how we get some of those things done. We need a conceptual plan adopted early in the spring uh, in order to start operating as the Utah Lake Authority. So we will complete the conceptual plan and then we'll move into the kind of the more in-depth version after that at a slightly more relaxed pace. Great. So well, any questions or, or comments? I guess I'll just try to sink my teeth into it a little more and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Or, it, it seems like it's a tricky thing because we don't know where the science is gonna take everything. But we're going to do our best attempt right now to say, here's where we kind of want to go. Um, but it will be subject to a lot of further study and analysis, and that will guide things too. I mean, it, it, I, I don't, yeah, I'm, um, I'm trying to compare it maybe a little bit to a, a cities do general plans where they kind of look ahead to what they might want to do on housing in the future, but it's not set yet. Um, anyway, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm trying to work around it and, and just make sure I get it. It does seem like it's going to be a tricky thing to to balance um, saying what we want based on what we think we know now, but that's all going to possibly there'll be some revelation that oh, algae blooms are the most healthy things ever, you know, and we want more of them. You know, I mean. That's a stupid example, but yeah. but all we can do is the best we can at this point and chart a somewhat of a vision. And then I think you mentioned here some criteria on how we'll evaluate projects. Anything anyone would say is they hear me spurt that all out to shape correct that or shape that? Or... No, no, it's a it's a great point, and that's why the plan. There's there's a lot that we do know, but there is there are items that we that we. Yeah. And and the intent behind the plan is to have to outline all the things that we do know and, and what the best management practices for those are, but then also keep an element throughout that that is an adaptive management element based on new information. So we're we're finalizing the Utah Lake Water Quality Plan or study. And that's going to give us an implementation framework 
that we can adapt into what we're doing. And so the, the, the idea is not that today we decide everything we're going to do and we do no more. It is to, it is to, to do what we can, what we know, and have that adaptive element in there so that anything new that is coming through discovery and science and research you know, are things that we can pull into our plan as we go. Eric, I might just add as well, um, you know, the difference in the, the term management in the bill is to facilitate and coordinate um, with the Lake Authority. And so I see the, you know, there's there's a difference between the plan that we're doing and what like a, you know, a city's master plan might look like. The general plan might be a little more prescriptive on, on certain allowable uses and whatnot. I think this plan is going to really complement the plan that Forestry Environment State Lands um, will be undertaking as well, where there will actually be. Uh, you know, the difference in like what is allowable. So I think like facilitating, coordinating what the vision for Utah Lake is versus like, you know, the actual, um, you know, that will, will obviously be incorporated in Utah Lake. But I think they're meant to complement each other. The plan you're talking about is not the water quality. No, we, we have management plans on all of our uh, sovereign land resources. The one for Utah Lake is due to be updated and that's a funding request that we've made, but, uh, but that will be updated in the next year or two. And that will, Hopefully, it'll be a lot better than the one that currently exists. It's about 12 years old. So, so you'll uh, build it and be complementary. And I think that's something that maybe we might want to look at like one of our more recent plans to, to see how they best complement each other. Because I do think there's going to be some uh, level of you know, overlap where we want to make sure that they, they're speaking to each other rather than budding heads or anything. So, yeah, that's my point. Maybe one other thought is just given that this plan is is meant to be you know really driven by goals and objectives of that adding that adaptive um, nature of it that Eric describes that you know there's not necessarily one way to get to those meeting those goals and if the plan comes up with specific projects and implementation programs it's aiming at achieving those those goals but the adaptive nature is reflecting that as science changes and things change in the future that we have to be adjusting. Thank you. So I guess the other piece um, in thinking about the project vision is, is specifically um, thinking about the crit critical success factors. So from a Utah Lake Authority perspective, how will they measure success in the project? And maybe it's as simple as you have a plan you like and um, to have the you know the box check with the conceptual plan to start operating officially as, as a new LA. Um, but just wanted to to uh, so this is what their thoughts in terms of what what can make this project a success in the I've got a few thoughts from. I want to well, hear it's gonna it's gonna then be your audience is right what success looks like. So will the business community measure metrics similar to say you know, a city that wants to improve the shoreline the recreational you know, attractiveness of the lakes? So I think that we would maybe look at you know what success looks like based on hey you know, this this audience, this demographic would like to see this so on so might be a way to approach that question. Let's do the ask. What are the what are the factors? There's an economic component, there's a conservation component, uh, there's a recreation component. They might each have different. I believe in fact one of the reasons why I am so excited about participation is I think we can find really good combination of how those work in concert with one another. I don't think we have to give up one to have another. It's not a zero sum, which is really what is the power behind what we're doing here. It's that collaboration, commerce, recreation, 50, 100, 150 year outlook, what that rate does. Any others? That's a good point. Is this Comprehensive management plan have a target time outlook 
or is it indefinite? Is it a 20 year horizon or anything you'd say about that? Or is that for us to decide? I mean, as a city, we just recently went through this. It's like a 20 year vision, but you redo it every yeah. five or six years, right? So, like, I think that, you know, when the lake you say this is our 50 year vision, but we need to get together and redo this every that's right. five to eight years. Our growth is because it doesn't get changed. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your goals can change. And, and then you've got the legislative piece, you've got to be done in the GAs, and we've got to look at getting people to Saratoga Springs, East West, easier than going. So one day, if you look at the transmitting mm -hmm. 50, they do have the bridge in the bridge, bridge yeah. over the lake. So, so that's that's at 50, that's less than 50 years away. Maybe, maybe in my life, probably yeah. more years. It's on there 2040. Yeah, that. Hopefully you're around 2040. <laughs> I would think there would be as far as measuring success is there's some deliverables that can be very short term, kind of low hanging fruit. And then there's things that are going longer range planning and will take more strategic, you know, uh, accomplishments year over year to see you know, certain things happen. I would love to see that we could show short term uh, benefits will be accomplished that would make the easier projects goals and deliverables in combination with meeting all those like what was mentioned to you know, having a very comprehensive order. So yeah I'm supposed to mind we have to have a lot of base hits so we can go to the legislature for our home runs. <laughs> right. Yeah. We gotta we gotta be able to show those things we accomplish this and this and this. Now we need we're gonna need this is our goal. We, we're gonna need some need more resources. Yeah. 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 You know, it kind of seems to me like the conceptual plan should have a little bit more longevity as well. Like that's something that conceptually hits those 20, 30, 40, 50 year visions. And then when we dive into the details, um, you know, that's where we'll get into the nitty gritty and uh, have specific goals and they might get outdated because we meet those objectives. And then we want to dive in further, you know, every five, eight, 10 years to, to update that. I like that. Any other thoughts? Dr. Hungerford, what do we do from a, from, from your side of things? Do we have any vision on that? Yeah, so my lens is really like sustainability and kind of what Curtis said, if there's, it's more than just environmental conservation, it's also economics, recreation, because that's going to help it endure. Um, yeah, so I agree with a lot that's been said. Yeah, I'm thinking about um, just how we get more people to enjoy the lake and use the lake and have it be a community asset instead of just kind of an empty spot. Just one thing is we just squeeze zero. We spend our budget every year and we could always go back to the community. We don't need a single guy on the table. You sit up and you go back. Just like you're saying, so all the great things we did. In fact, this is what we could have done. We could extend it to increase our budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, did you have others? No, these are great, great suggestions. Yeah. Um, five, five to eight years. What's typical for? We are goals. We are goals to every ten years. It's not like we try to do that, but it's dependent on funding and other factors. We do what we call it a comprehensive management plan, okay. and we are required by statute to do that for all of the sovereign land bodies. So we just finished our last one that didn't have a plan within the last one for three years. So we're kind of in that cycle of updates, you know, so here it's only it's there, it's the next event, it's only the key. What about the city's general plan? Is that typically five years or more? You're revising those? 10 to 10 more. We're in the middle one right now. We do ours every five just because we're growing so fast. 
the state mandates state African mandates the mandate we have a sustainability index, the transportation index, so they make changes that also force the end of well, then, then similar to our plan, I would imagine that each of the city's plans and how they interact with the lake are really going to uh, help to guide, you know, like this plan and some of the fine details. So it, it seems to me like there's going to be a need to update the, you know, the after we get the broad picture of those fine details pretty often. Yeah. I always say it's not, it's not, yes, we have to do it this way. It's just high level. These are some things we were hoping to get accomplished or looking at. And I think of our general plan and that new airport was projected to be potential 2050. And I can't say what magically is going to happen in 2050, but we're going to do it now. And so we have to, you know, amend our general plan. It's now in our new general plan. And so it's it's a living document for us just to grow up as things come up that we don't expect or able to plan finance. <clears throat> For me, it, it would be really helpful to make sure that this plan identifies feasible projects that we not not feasible in that we, they fit within our budget per se, but things that are that that are doable that create a measured effect on on the lake or the lake shore that that we can start focusing on. Uh, either incrementally or as as major projects uh, as we find funding and so forth. Uh, but but to really kind of hammer in on on the the items that are needed on the lake that are from a lake management all across the country, what are the what are the best types of projects that a that a group like this can dive into? To make those needed adjustments that that will bring people to the light. And so I would prefer that the plan doesn't have these grand ideas that, that are infeasible that that would be the silver bullets. I, I don't want, you know, piecemeal type projects that, that'll collectively create the response that we need. If that makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. I think that kind of what goes with what you had said here. It's just your actionable yes. projects that are put out there right away. Big and small. They, I mean, they don't, have, again, they don't have to be. So I'm I'm excited to think big on this, but, yeah. but they just need to be things that are doable and, and you know, might require serious investment but but are doable and that we can start pursuing this like chris said right base hits and impacts yes remember those sports analogies <laughs> <laughs> great yeah that, that was a really nice discussion and helpful to hear that Okay, so I think we are to the planning team um, conversation. And yeah, I guess we've, we've started to really set the stage for this, but what we have talked about is at least starting with the foundation of um, providing the option for each of the members of the board to participate, and if not, um, you know, identify a, a, an alternative representative in that organization. Um, I think we also want to open the conversation in terms of is that inclusive enough or are other interests, organizations that we want to have represented. Um, so I guess the starting place though is, um, well, maybe I got this backwards, but think about yourself. Are you planning on participating? If not, do you have someone in mind for your organization? We can just we'll send out an email to the to our board yeah. 
So they have some, some time to think through that with the with the list of kind of expectations for them. Yeah. See if that takes you up the box. Talk about December and January. Yeah. 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 I think we have some dates on the upcoming meetings that we're going to have to slide. Um, but yeah, that's the only somewhat of urgency of can we identify who the group is and not really hold back our, our planning to actually start getting them at least that those group trial. Eric, is the is the planning does the Utah Lake Authority have a public engagement um, aspect of the planning? Like do they have to open it for public comment and they have the whole public um, Meetings and whatnot, or what do you want the rules and tell on that? Our, our public requirement is that it, it go before lecture communities. Okay. And so, they get a 30 day comment period. Perfect. So all of the entities that have lakeshore frontage will give an opportunity to find one. Yeah. And then in addition to that, we're also doing a public scoping survey element that we added to our 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 planning effort that was not required, but but in an effort to try to get some kind of feedback. Well. That'll be on the more in-depth. Will you also have an aspect to it to, uh, where it goes through like the state's RDCC where they have different agencies who are able to comment on it? Because I, I would imagine like uh, that also allows like the, the BLM and the federal partners to, to also review the plan. And that's something we normally engage in on, on big plans, but I think there'd be some opportunity to get the perspective of agencies that are necessarily directly adjacent but might have some overlapping yeah there's a there's a specific list of agencies that are articulated in this and and there they will be the group that we reach out to for, for specific comment yeah i might suggest that the that we yeah i would maybe suggest that we use rdct as a, as a broader way to connect with like you know, that's something that Flipco has is um, yeah. kind of uh, encompasses a lot of the, the agencies that, that would be interested. And I know that that's maybe an extra step, but it's something that might give us uh, a little more security than a little more eyes on it. We'll be back. Uh, this, is, this is up for you. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think one thing to think about, <clears throat> there's multiple perspectives on whether we brought in or not, but I'll just say this, this does seem like it's going to be potentially a very powerful document in decision making in the future. And I remember a time when I was discussing with a legislator, what, if, what about putting some advocacy representatives on the Utah Regulatory? Right the response was pretty strong that, <clears throat> They need to have a voice, they need to have a role, time to give input and everything, but that, uh, the real running of this, you know, would not be for them. And, and so I'm thinking about that context as we're discussing whether we bring people into the actual planning team and just recognizing that it was a very deliberate decision, very hard fought, very, uh, everything was thought through when, when this committee was come up with a composition of it, it was it was a long, in-depth discussion. So I just I would just add that to the discussion. And I don't think that ends the analysis, maybe. And if someone wants to make an argument that we bring others on, let's let's discuss it. But I think that's an important thing to, to also keep in mind. Yeah, uh, is, is those those pieces. I think uh, so. One approach would be let's make sure we really let people come and comment or advocate or whatever. Um, but I would guess that at some point, this planning team needs to kind of finalize things and make decisions. And if someone's on the planning team, they probably have a vote. Um, I don't know how else. Well, uh, on the recommendation. Oh, yeah. You know, at some point, at some point, that planning team needs to recommend something. And, and I don't know how else you get there if there are just different point of views. So anyway, I'm just thinking out loud on this. Yeah, those are some thoughts. No, I appreciate that. Um, and, and I agree the, the board was was a very, very intentional 
um, group that was intentionally as small as it was, try to make it manageable. Uh, from the planning side of things, uh, I would, I, I have a small list of, of folks that I think would be really helpful to bring to the table. You, you, you all can can veto uh, the, the idea or individuals, uh, but but there are folks that are doing management work on the lake uh, that I thought would be very helpful to the planning discussion. So I'll read off some names or organizations. It doesn't have to be individuals per se, but um, and then tell me your thoughts. Uh, so we have June Second Restoration or Recovery Implementation Program, Russ Franklin, I think would be very helpful. Uh, from the Division of Water Quality, in addition to John, uh, Director Mackey, we have Scott Daly, who has been uh, really instrumental in our water quality study management. Uh, Mark Farmer or Robbie Edgel with Division of Wildlife Resources. Uh, one with Mark is the is the regional manager. Robbie is the habitat biologist for this region. Uh, both could be really helpful on helping us with the conservation and, and restoration type planning. Uh, Simon Sorensen, our partner to the south, uh, Jordan, Jordan River, uh, executive director. To the north, to the downstream. Downstream, downstream, but it is always good. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. I, I, yeah, you should know that. But. Uh, Eric McCulley with the Utah Mitigation Commission. It's a longer name than that, but uh, he's Eric McCulley with uh, Utah Mitigation Commission. Mitigation Conservation Mitigation Commission. Yes, it's a long. Uh, so he recently uh, started with the Mitigation Commission for the Purple River Delta project specifically, uh, but is quite an expert on um, wetland restoration and river restoration and things like that. He could be someone that we could ask to participate. Uh, he's already kind of their, their outreach person for the Purple River Delta project. He could be really helpful. Uh, and lastly, Mike Rao and or whoever uh, he would feel would be helpful from Central Utah Water. Uh, again, another organization that has done years and years and years of work on Utah Lake through the Central Utah Project. Um, they are not on the board because you don't, the Utah Lake Authority does not have an impact on water rights. Um, but Either way, from a planning standpoint, they, they again, they bring a, a ton of institutional knowledge on the work that's gone into the into Utah Lake, and, and he would have access to other folks there that are specialists on various different elements. Is there anybody from the June Suckers program that's specific that you had in mind? Russ Franklin. I, I think all those names you listed off are books that I would have in mind as well, and I think so that would be a good addition to the planning team. So I apologize because I was able to first um, committed to another meeting, not a last meeting, but so this committee is um, are they just an advisory committee to help? And then but they are not voting or they have no financial control, they bring their ideas and they're just they're bringing their ideas to the table to help in the development of our management plan the board is the voting, is the voting entity that that, it, that adopts that plan lakeshore communities get a 30-day uh, yeah. period to comment on on our conceptual plan and then later on our on our final plan i just want a clarification and what is the number we're trying to stay up it's not like you're right around is that the whole committee just that was listed. No, the committee would be the board and the or their designations, designees. And then Adam. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think that's a good consideration. And I think 
yeah, with more more voices, maybe more more challenge to manage a group. But with that said, uh, I'm not sure we want to constrain. Um, I think the different perspectives and knowledge and expertise could be benefit. So, so I also don't think it's required that all board members be on the planning team if they feel that they're interested in represented mm -hmm. by another member. So that can go match the size as well. Well, there, there's out of everyone that was invited from the board, there's I think eight of us, including, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so I think that we probably won't have more representation from the board if this is an indication of the board. Yeah, it's more us. 16 to 18 is probably how many will end up with is my guess and and the folks that i that i'm suggesting are a group of individuals that are very good productive folks to work with on a, on a planning type effort that i've seen work in similar environments and are are going to be the i like critical voices and they, and they can be critical voices, but they're also very you know, productive individuals. So it isn't it, it isn't setting us up for a, a long debate or a, a challenging environment, rather a productive one. That's just a school. Don't worry. Don't worry. I think that that our board, as well as as at least as it's structured today, is. Really well together, so. I'm just again thinking out loud and apologize. I don't want to overcomplicate, but I've been involved with these kind of committees and things, and it, it is interesting how you have to sort of organically resolve differences of opinions. You know, someone expresses, no, I really feel this, and now it's really socially awkward to say, well, too bad, so sad, or or whatever. One way I think you can think about doing this is to the extent it comes down to decision making or trump cards or whatever, that only the board members and their designees, if, if, if it does come, hopefully it's, it, it kind of softly rests somewhere and, and yay, we've got our plan and everybody's more or less okay with it. But if not, and the planning committee is sitting there going, okay, we just heard two strong opinions. You could you could say that only the board member or the representative gets to say, okay, we th we have no other way to resolve this one. So, but it's only those folks who get to raise their hand and vote. Um, as you know, if, if it came down to that, that might be one way to just alleviate a little concern that you know three of these people show up and and only that other group come and they maybe. Don't see the same the same same way as the elected official side do, and and uh, well, in that case, we kind of we've established by by resolution or whatever how you guys are supposed to deal with with that conundrum uh, by just kind of giving that final power to them. That's not helpful, and you don't like it. I'm just brainstorming. Yeah, we can we can we can make that official. I mean, with our water quality study, we our science panel, we have it seated with with ex officio and independent members. And the independent members are the they they kind of are more of the voting members. Our ex officio kind of vote on occasion, as long as they're not. Um, Trying to get work or or have a financial obligation because you have scientists, some of them are doing the actual research, and thus they're you know have some incentive there. We could we could just refer to anyone that's not a board member as an ex officio, but but they all sit at the table and and maybe it's not if there is the final vote, maybe any discrepancy is deference is given to the board member. Is that have you ever set up anything like that? I was gonna to say too that our, our lead facilitator is gonna be handling these vision workshops and post objection workshops. I think he envisions sitting down with the planning team or I'm sorry, the project management team prior to that to kind of understand some of the ground rules. And as the lead facilitator, I think we can pose that question to him and see what his recommendation is. 
Um, and also, you know, he wants to chat with you and before you hold that workshop to kind of better understand if there are any ground rules um, that you need to be aware of. But it's something we can flag for him and see what his input is. Okay. But I also think, I mean, we talk about the fact that uh, the adoption of the plan is available you know, at six with four. And so when you're talking about voting and you know, that sort of thing, I don't think it's not that yet. It's, it's going to be too big of an issue. I think was maybe the most important um, what the planning team would bring to this is really developing these goals and uh, really set the stage for what this plan is going to cover and address. And we envision a prioritization and exercise with those to where we would use some different criteria to and, and work with that group to more or less rank things. And so I, I don't think you know one individual is going to really sway how that goes. Um, but it's I don't think it's really the we're not looking necessarily for consensus where one individual that we bring into the group that's not part of the board um, is really going to. You know, get in the way or do they really change the trajectory of the project? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess we did start with Isaac, you had made a comment about the board and the fact that this deliberate decision was made to restrain the constituency there. Um, Eric put out a number of names, these different state and I guess non state federal. Um, so I don't know if there's any reaction or if we heard the reaction of support to, to some of those ideas. And is anyone opposed to opening the, the membership or participation in the planning team beyond the utility authority? Oh, I don't have promises from all six of those that they can say that I understand. Mm -hmm. At least, at least a couple mm -hmm. of them have said they could. We invite them. I have a few uh, thoughts. I like the ideas you suggested, but it seems like there's a real gap in the users or recreationalists to use the lake. That voice doesn't seem to be presented at all in the additions. It's a really challenging group to to lock down for a long period of time. Like if we're thinking about planning the vision of Utah Lake, like we definitely want to include how people are using it and what, what they see as potential problems or ways they would like to see it improve. So whether that's a, one of the marinas that's around the lake or some other broad like user group, I think it'd be helpful. That's a great question. Who, who represents Hunting community, yeah. Who represents boating community? And there's not like a association. Yeah, to there, out. there are some associations, but even though there are, it. I, I say this because in our water quality study, it has been surprisingly challenging to get a recreation community member to come to any regularity of meetings over time. Uh, we've got a sailing community that we've worked with. We've got the, the Water Ski Association representative who did a really good job of coming to the meetings for a while, but this kind of faded. Perhaps extending an invitation to those users. Well, I, if I may, Hillary, I think to your concern, I think that might fit well with the public comment period that's planned in for the morning that version of the plan. Now, Eric's right, and the others have mentioned. I mean, even to your point, Chris, about who represents hunters, but if we find a hunter, are they going to speak for somebody else that might conflict with their recreation, like the paddle paragliders or the birds? So I think we found thus far in similar efforts that public outreach and or surveys and things like that, and making sure that we contact those groups specifically that we know are involved in the lake has worked well instead of trying to get someone or two or how many do you even pick when we have 20, 30 plus different recreation activities at the lake, it hasn't functioned as well. But I think that we definitely could work with Jacobs on the public comment period. So that it's not just out to the public, but we do target specifically groups that we know use the lake. And that's for Rachel. Yeah. 
Yeah, or would it be useful to have one of the marinas as an economic interest mm -hmm. on the lake? I did. I am really jazzed and stoked about the environmental aspect, but I think that it's like missing these other things that we just said that we want to have in our vision. Are you suggesting private marinas? To a degree, to a degree, we have that. So Saratoga Springs is. Um, we have a lot of two marinas. <laughs> Then you represent some marine control, has a marine that's state. Yeah. <laughs> but I, well, I think we have some of that representation, but I like where you're going. Like, you see where Sam's at on this, inviting them into the public comment. Because who represents power paradigm? And who represents hunters? I mean, you can go to Ducks Unlimited, but I don't even know how active their chapter is in Utah. So I think it'd be hard to get a representation for those. So uh, just another comment on that. There is a newly formed division of recreation was uh, formed, I think, two years ago. And so perhaps having the division of recreation as a state agency come in and try to embody some of the recreation concerns. But then I would also say, you know, I think you're right, Hillary, that we want to represent those folks. But I do think, like, as uh, some of our elected officials, uh, they're here to represent their constituents. So hopefully they're representing them in a way that the I, I think it was doing a really good job um, publicizing and promoting the public comment mm -hmm. activity. And we can do that through social media outreach to their their individual pages mm -hmm. in those groups. Um, but at the end of the day, we can't, we can't obligate their involvement. I mean, we, we just went through this in the city trying to get people to participate in our general plan. You can have as many meetings as you want, and four people walk in the door. So this is why this is like the why I was kind of asking about what that public engagement. And I know the bill specifically outlines who gets to review the plan, but I don't think it hurts to add a couple of extra layers on that. And having like a public open house is where the public can come and like see what the plan how it's forming. I think there's a lot of added value and more buy-in on the plan. We can get those folks to come and say like they had an opportunity. To come and, and spend a couple hours with the planning team or you know, whoever that looks like. It, it, I think it buys a lot of credibility. Well, along that same lines, I was just discussing with Dave that at the very least, we some kind of online open house would work sure. well too, just for you know, maybe both doing it in person online where we target and say, hey, if you recreate at the lake, you live around the lake, come to this and let us know what you think. Well, or like what Envision Utah did on some of their point of the mountain surveys. Like, that'd be pretty cool just to send it out to some of the counties or cities and say, you know, like here, like something that cascades a little bit allows them to pick different things they like, and then it leads them to a certain point. I know that adds cost, but so the survey tool is what is a is a value added item that we did add to our contract. So that, that helps. So there will be and 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 of all the the options for gaining specific public interest, I think that that is probably going to be the most effective. With the situation that we have, it's it's probably challenging for a specific city that has a pretty tight jurisdiction to get a, a very good sampling of the public to come to a open house. But we've got all of Utah County essentially uh, that is in the in the valley here that, that benefit or have thoughts on Utah Lake. And how do you find a location that you're going to get much of, of a sampling at all? From all of those communities around the lake. There doesn't, I mean, we'll, whatever we decide to do, Pope City will push out at the reason we have a lot of avenues we can push down on the social media and whatnot. Yeah. And our, our, you know, but again, through a survey, survey through a survey tool, though, right? That's perfect. Our utility value, we said that at the letter every month. Yeah. We have a lot of ways. Doesn't the county have some type of, uh, um, I don't know, like an email blast or any type of tool like that? We've got know? their emergency board. Yeah, <laughs> well, I don't know. Is there a human call? Um, we, we have at one point, but. I, yeah, they don't yeah. utilize it yeah. at all. So maybe we yeah. I can talk to a couple and just say, remember this great tool you have? <laughs> I like what, what Hillary is bringing up, though, because I think you're kind of accomplishing another goal just by the mere effort of outreach. It's going to start to change the mindset of people like, oh, 
there's really something in our leader. I relate. I mentioned to people this whole lake authority that I'm serving on this road, really. There's finally efforts to make the lake better. I think all that just brings really good conversations that. I kind of like when you were talking about inviting people that they might not become a member. I was almost hearing an idea in there of like maybe there's one more, you know, if it's a half day, but these are in, this is not an open house, this is not a public come, please come. It's Joe, will you come talk about what you do as far as fishing? You know, Sharon, will you come talk about what you do paragliding? You know, Steve, will you talk about running the marina that you know, the sailing thing that you do? And so we just sit here and we listen to people who are ready to give us a 15 minute thing about what they do and it's planned and they know they're coming and 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 that sounds really profitable and, and, and you know not not as a replacement for everything else but i i kind of tend to agree that you announce public open houses and you send out service and you get responses but but i think it'd be really efficient and enlightening to just have this little parade of you know, people who use the lake and let, just let the committee hear that, you know, let the planning team hear that. If, if that's manageable and not too hard to do. And, but, yeah. I, I, I think that would be way more effective. Yeah. Inviting specific members. Uh -huh. yeah. I think they will, they, they probably will come, you know, that they're committed to come. Yeah. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. But I guess, were there any other thoughts or suggestions related to back to the planning team, organizations or individuals to come to this. My only feedback there is as you grow the planning team or steering committee or whatever you call it, um, as long as they come into it with the understanding of that they are an advisory body, um, so they have expectations. They don't want to come in with the thought that they're going to be making decisions. Yeah. Um, that way that they don't have you know, unmet expectations. Sure. Yeah. Is there a platform for it? I mean, we have to yeah. really organize active groups in Provo that want to have say so. Is there going to be a platform where they can come to have some events to speak? Yes. All, all of these planning meetings are public meetings because we have the likelihood of a quorum. And so we we publicize each of these meetings, and there will be public comment period within our planning meetings. Because they'll kind of find me or you, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So to the question of, of dates, and I think we, we had maybe hope to, to really put some dates on the calendar and we might not be able to finalize it today, but if we can take a stab at it. But the first workshop we're looking at with the planning team is related to developing a, a vision and mission. Um, and we were looking at um, the week of December. 19 for that workshop. Um, so I guess for for those present today to consider what a let's see, I would say four to six hour window there, probably plan on a four hour meeting. Um, when you if you could accommodate that happen during those first few days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. And we would obviously be including that in, in an email to those members of the board not here today. And, um, presumably, goes to do a poll or something like that. But really As I was going to say, once we kind of strapped up those time commitments, goals, and responsibilities with 19, we can send that out in an email with a doable poll over some times. The 19th, 20th, or the 21st. Just a comment on that, those second dates. I think the 16th is Martin Luther King Day, so I think a lot of folks will be off. And then uh, the legislative session, I think, starts the following day, the 17th. And so I think it'd be, especially since two of our 
board members are on the uh, part of the legislature would be advantageous to do it before the session starts. And I think a lot of us are going to be pretty heavily involved in that. I think so, if it's possible. I know that's a tighter deadline on some of the things you'll be working on. But... That's really helpful. Once the session starts, we'll get yeah, a lot of will be done. I think a lot of the folks that are here probably will end up being yeah. moved into that as well as session starting the 23rd. Oh, it's the 17th. Yeah, it's the Tuesday after the third Monday. They make it easy. I'm impressed that you're Listen, there's some things you find out. There's no You were wrong the first time. So we're helping you. Thank you stay back. Okay, so I guess we'd be looking at the week of January 9th, potentially the 10th, 11th, or 12th, for that holds in the objectives workshop. So, yeah, to put that on the radar, then we keep following up with an email and you know, scheduling poll to find the best time. And I think what we assumed was that the workshop would last up to four hours, but that we have, as we continue to see, up to two or three more hours for the following day or another time that we so if, if there's still more to be discussed or the consensus is reached during that first workshop. So we'll, we'll include that in the doodle poll and the letter as well. But just, you know, have us keep in mind that maybe an additional short workshop uh, on the menu. Well, moving forward, I know we've, we've seen this a couple times now, this graphic kind of just attempts to, to display the main components of the, the scope of work and the main tasks associated with developing a plan. Um, we have, as we just mentioned, we've added some scope to do public engagement work that um, feels like based on some of the input today and feedback that will be a really important addition to, to the project that um, given the constraints, just schedule constraints for getting the conceptual plan for the start of spring, um, we wouldn't do that for the engagement until after that. So probably coming out of that review and adoption of the conceptual plan, we would embark on that public engagement level, um, which I think there's some great ideas of the voice today. We initially thought of doing some sort of online survey and either in person or virtual, actual live event sort of announce to get in the um, Yeah, I, I'm not sure there's too much more to cover here. We kind of, I guess we're we're talking, we're thinking through the framing of, of what this plan is and, and really even getting to that conceptual plan. Um, there is quite a bit of a time crunch there. And um, we may be interested in, in getting thoughts and put on what does it actually look like? You know, we don't love the, the framing of the term uh, minimal viable product, but realistically to be able to get a conceptual plan in that checks the boxes that really you know projects the vision for um, the management of, of the lake um, but really without having the time to go through the full exercise of doing the work all the way to get to a full thing. Um, so that's kind of the initial challenge we're, we're looking at and really again those initial workshops with the planning team we're you know, going to set up set us on the trajectory to to you know, develop on that conceptual plan. I don't, real quick on that, um, I noticed the reviewed current or current management activity staff at that first workshop. Do you think it'd be helpful to just kind of get together all the different plans? I know Saratoga Springs has some, American Fork, we have some in Vineyard. Just getting all those plans into like one consolidated document before having that first workshop so we can see what are the current like what are we already working on since we don't really have a comprehensive plan for the lake right now? I think in fact for the vision workshop, 
you know, we don't necessarily want to constrain the vision to through the lens of what's already going on at the lake. So I think it is kind of strategic that we consider, you know, where what's the idealized state for Utah Lake without thinking of the confines of what's already happening. So the vision is really just drafting, you know, what's the conceptual or idealized condition for the lake. And that is kind of an overarching framework to guide the plan. To accomplish both things, is it possible for you guys to have some homework that sometime between now and that third box that would you to Utah Lake Challenges and Current Management Activities, that you guys reach out to Vineyard City, Saratoga Springs, Provo City, um, Linden, Utah County, sure. and find out what the existing lakeshore planning efforts are that are incorporated into management plans and just kind of have those stacked as part of the discussion for that third. Yeah, well, and maybe. I don't think that, you know, that that's just because it's kind of a <clears throat> division. I don't think it's uh, contingent upon that sequence. You know, we're not going to necessarily start that after the vision workshop. Um, that'll be ongoing for us as soon okay. as we kick off, right? Um, but to your point, you know, part of that review challenges and management activities, what's included in our scope of work is a development of an online um, map that kind of displays where these activities are taking place and some of the attributes of them so that the planning team and public can see where these activities are taking place um, and that's going to facilitate our assessment of, of the gap analysis and potential management solutions. So as we inventory all the management activities, we're going to be compiling them in a spatial map um, and that's going to really feed into the goals and objectives workshop. I have a question. I like the idea of creating the expanded vision and really capturing the new ideas that are there. And I like the idea of the homework because as you're opening challenges, um, how do we incorporate the idea that each of these cities have gone through a public plan, envisioned a goal, brought it to the public, voted on it, and are implementing it, um, and kind of tie it into this because I think what might occur is that we'll come to a meeting and then we'll all share our plans as our vision because we're implementing the things we know we need to occur. And I wonder, is that kind of what you're assuming is going to happen and you're thinking then they'll think outside of that or how, how do we kind of shape that together? Because in my thought, I, I think, if we did have the plan before us and we knew what was there, then we could add to whatever goals or tie all of those goals together as the ultimate vision that we're trying to take hold of or, or maybe suggest things to cities that are presenting their plans that maybe they hadn't thought of yet. You know what I mean? It feels, it feels complex to have a vision and then have to reestablish a vision in a, in a future meeting. I could be wrong. Maybe I don't really understand I think some of that would be discussed potentially at kind of a pre-vision workshop meeting like our facilitator and the parent. Um, and to be honest, you know, I think that vision in the workshop, you know, I don't know that we have a fully fleshed idea for how that's going to go. And I think it's important though that we hear some of these potential risks from, from this group and Certainly that's one of them is that, you know, there's this concept of um, accidental adversaries, right? If there's, you know, multiple visions already in place, you know, is each representative going to frame those visions and how do we merge those into a, a single consolidated overarching vision for the lake? But I think that's just what the purpose of the workshop will be. I think that's what our facilitators do to work through and, you know, hear all of those different perspectives. Um, translate that into hopefully a unified vision for the lake that the planning group and the utility authority can get behind. Is that taking place now? Uh, for example, Chris, did you coordinate with your master mm -hmm. plan? So I wonder if that is one of the roles of this body is to do that and be there. 
Yeah, and I think that's where the vision really comes in because we're not going to be reshaping everybody's shorelines. It's really how we tie that vision together. Well, there, I mean, if you, if everybody that's present participates, you know, you'll have your vision for later, and I doubt you have a vision for like how Saratoga right. is supposed to look. So, as right. long as you're there and present and able to voice that opinion, I think that that'll help shape it to be consistent with the plan that you, your constituents have voted on. No, I agree. What I was thinking was, sorry, thank you. <laughs> so I, um, I was thinking if we did have our plans there and we lined them up and you could see, there's vineyards and there's London and there's some garden fork and Lehigh and we're going around the lake and it's out laying out there before us. We could say, okay, here's our 22 less enhanced access points and here's what vineyards doing and how it flows right into what Provo is doing, you know. And then we could create a vision of saying, so where are we taking this greater vision when we're tying each of those together? Because I think that's the vision that we're building is how are we connecting and then how are we conjoining. And creating an effort where we all move in sync, right? Yeah. How, how, I mean, I think at this point, could we maybe dive into like what this conceptual first stage of the plan would look like? Like, are we going to get into that level of detail like Mayor Fulmer's talking about, or is it going to be more conceptual like we want to talk about, you know, improved water quality, more native vegetation, better trails, and better public access? Like, can we, can we drill down that far to find our plans together? It's a good question. I think. Again, there's the limitations just due to time uh, more than anything, but presumably we, we're starting with goals and individual objectives to get to each of those goals. In terms of that actual details of specific all you know, projects and how they're tying into each other, and how they're implemented and monitored thereafter, all those details may not be a part of that conceptual plan, doing more of an outline. But it's it's not defined fully at this point. Well, I think those goals and objectives being informed by those present who have plans, you know, vineyards going to make sure that the goals and objectives most likely align with what they have planned or want to do at the lake, so that when we get to the detailed phase, it's already lining up with the goals and objectives. And the mayor Bomber, I think that would be pretty bad here. We're discussing with the first phase of this project that I heard of planning. Is primarily going to be those goals and objectives. I mean, it's going to be very conceptual and broad. And so I don't want to go, I, I wouldn't think that we would get the level of detail to like prescribe what your shoreline development would look like. Like it might be more broad about some of the improvements that we all, like maybe they're like the, we talk about the goals and objectives that are consistent among all of our shoreline cities and lake managers and folks through there. Yeah, and maybe what Eric suggested would be meeting with individual cities before, if that puts your timeline, if that captures that. I just think that if you're coming up with broad goals, like if we say, okay, water quality is a tough goal, connected lake trail alignment is a tough goal, native plant restoration is a tough goal, and you have these tough goals that we're coming up with. But if we knew the plans before, we could see what has already been accomplished? What have we done? You know, are we focused on non-point source things? Are we focused on, you know, the reclamation plans? Those goals and objectives just become so much easier if we know what is there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And the broad goals. And we do have that inventory management activities before the goals and objectives workshop. Yeah, that's great. So that really does, like yeah, I sure. said, it makes it easier to say we know what's already happening and what's not happening makes it easier to pinpoint what those goals are. But the vision workshop really is just that higher level conceptual workshop where the planning team kind of decides and defines, you know, some of the details of this management action plan, which are are somewhat new and, and to be determined, right? It's 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 not a forestry fire to say like the CUP. It's kind of a different Management action plan that you know is has some room for for fully fleshing out, right? And so that's what the visioning workshop will be about. Mayor, I like I like your idea, and I think it might be something that we could work on. Maybe even separate from this is developing a a map layer, a GIS map layer that is all the it, essentially it's our project page that we have now. That's a list in a map display 
so people can click on the projects around Utah Lake layer, and then they'll see all these, you know, here's a here's an enhanced marina, here's here's shoreline trail, here's the Walker Way project, here's vineyards frontage with their city center, here's whatever American Fork and then the Linden's new park that they're planning, yeah. that sort of thing, and kind of go around it and, and they may well allow to create some you know interactivity where they can click on them and find out and then link it to their well, projects page. So it'll help us know for achieving our goals, right? Because say we one of our top goals is a wetland mitigation bank, and then we already have you know going after that 90 acre project. Yep. It, it would be easy to not only outline our goals, but then say, okay, well, we captured that in this 90 acres over here, and that's what's going to take care of this. Yep. Because without knowing, it, I think it'd be challenging. But yeah, we'll, an interactive map would be we'll work on even that. better. Yeah. If that it brought it up. Yeah, and I think that's brilliant because it, it, independent of the lake authority, each city has additional investment and things that they're accomplishing that are adjacent to or right there. So showing the public. All the collaborative efforts that are about to produce. So I think we're going to be positive. Mm -hmm. Especially if we have shared goals for how we want to plan the state. The state, like Provo, has you know, the Provo Marina. It's run by the state, but if we're looking at everything in one of our shared goals is like enhancing certain areas, and we have this outline for it, and we're like, okay. Look at this plan. This is already done. This is conceptually what they're bringing to the table. I mean, just being able to share those goals would be even more effective. Like it. Can I just say, as a geography professor, this map talk just works. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great way to communicate. Yeah, and as part of our, our scope, we think about some of the more value added options that could be added is that for each component of the plan, there's going to be the conceptual plan, the draft plan, and the final plan. Each of those deliverables is accompanied by an updated line map that kind of represents some of those key findings and spatially um, applicable projects where you can open and extended attributes. So that's going to be part of our, our work. Reached. We we bought into that one. Mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> <laughs> I could I, I could remember if we'd said yes, let's do that or no. <laughs> yeah, that was with the new car that we <laughs> Yeah, so I, I do think some of your ideas we to some degree are already captured here with the gap analysis. That's that the new challenges and current management activities and everything with that. Like Kayla was describing, it's using a web map tool to, to display that information. So, we'll get a conversation. You can have, um, I guess I would be explaining some pillars so that as we do it, this project that we're working on, the sustainability impact, the economic impact, of it, so that everything we're doing it shows impacts in all the various. It's always sobering when we have to go back and ask for more budget or something to say, this is what we're working towards, and this is what the economic impact of the community will be, sustainability component. We have a list of tours that we can test things under. That is always a great thing when you're having to go and we just keep asking for money, and that's what. I mean, the game is we'll spend it and we'll ask for more and we'll spend it. But to talk, have those token things that we really have. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Part, of what, part of what we've incorporated into the planning is, is a monitoring a list of criteria for monitoring. Uh, and that can be one of those items is that we just incorporate one of our monitoring tools is what is being accomplished uh, so that we can track that more closely and report on that and use that as part of our our foundation for asking for additional resources so. 
Yeah, I, I think, you know, and I think the type <laughs> of objects that are ongoing now and that may come out of the plan will fall into different categories and have different components. Mm -hmm. The way we describe them or the way we maybe classify them in the, the web map could be done strategically the way that kind of you're alluding to the, to show the different boxes they check and that they have. Great. That's the whole county, that's great. It has county and draws from other counties, that's even better. So all those little extras that are really so important in the next program. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about schedule. So I guess we we talked about this um just that we we can start with this public comment um, component. Um, and this is yes, well, sorry, that's this is referring to the the main stakeholders to be just uh, adjacent to political bodies around the day and the process of our getting that conceptual plan adopted. So we're looking at um, in the March time frame of the 30 days. Um, we're still kind of we're talking about how we get creative. The, the House bill will specify 30 days. Um, we definitely feel that the time crunch and kind of need to have more time to be actually on the plan and not idle um, just through the time period. But, so I just flag in that. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to talk about the first bill. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So the um, yeah, so the the public engagement survey that we that Eric mentioned as a kind of value added option. Um, this is going to we're going to do more public engagement once we have the conceptual plan in place, and we feel like this is really strategic so that the public has something to provide input on rather than just kind of open-ended questions. Um, by giving them a, a framework and the conceptual plan, we open up a survey and, and just kind of better understand um, if that's in alignment with the public's vision for how the plan is, is going. So the survey will be developed, um, available to the public for about three weeks, and then we hope we can leverage all of our existing messaging networks um, to get the word out about the public survey. So we also have a public meeting. This is kind of what Sam you're talking about doing an open house. Um, we can do that virtual, we can do that um, in person. So those details, I feel like we can finalize as we get closer. That's not gonna be until May. Um, in the short term, our team's gonna be working really hard to get this conceptual plan in place to meet the deadline. And then finally, we have the stakeholder and public review uh, with the agencies and organizations that are listed in the state code and the House bill. Um, so in addition to those agencies that are listed as required entities, I think, mean, like you said, Ben, it's, it's great to invite um, specific feedback from some of the other agencies. But I, in theory, that would be captured as part of the public review. Um, a minimum of 30 days, and we have kind of up to a 45 day uh, review period for that draft plan. And that will be sometime in August. Um, so, this project timeline overview this really puts on the calendar where we foresee meeting with the planning team. So, you can see our kickoff is today. The workshop number one is going to be sometime during um, the week of the 19th. The second workshop, will move that to the week of January 9th, I think it was. Um, so you can see that the draft conceptual plan is gonna be have to be delivered by the end of February. So that just puts us you know, at a really quick pace. <laughs> So in part of what we'll write in the letter to the planning team are some of those expectations that you know, the planning team be available by email to review deliverables, interim deliverables, provide feedback 
um, and certainly attend the workshops. In the spring, um, we're hoping that there is a Utah Lake Authority board meeting that can coincide with kind of approval of the conceptual plan after it's been reviewed. Um, we have thought it could be pushed towards the end of March to allow um, more of a 30, a full 30 day review period for the conceptual plan. And then hopefully at the Utah Lake Authority board meeting, that's when the conceptual plan will be adopted um, in order to dissolve the Utah Lake Commission, that's my understanding. And after that conceptual plan is adopted, we'll have a little bit more breathing room, work through the summer to flesh out those details of all of the implementation of the potential solutions that we've identified, come up with some kind of monitoring strategy, um, identify indicators for success, um, identify funding opportunities, funding requirements, um, key and target stakeholders, um, partners, partnerships that need to be formed, et cetera. Um, and in that, those summer months too, we also have scoped for our Jacobs team to do kind of an on the ground workshop um, around the lake um, so that we can get all of our subject matter experts kind of around the, in the same room, so to speak, around the lake and see in person what's going on out there. Then um, this just shows our draft CMP due beginning of August. We have all of September for a public comment period. And then the several weeks for Jacob's team and the Utah Lake Authority to review and compile all the public comments received um, and shooting towards a target completion date of the end of October, which I think maybe Curtis, you mentioned, coincides yeah. with the presentation to the yeah. legislature. Yeah. Growth and prosperity is the 18th of October, so I think it's, it's pretty close. Yeah. Any questions or comments? Seems like a long time until you put it on paper. <laughs> <laughs> Bucklers, he felt. Yeah, that's how we feel. <laughs> so this conceptual plan outline, I think Ben, you had talked about, you know, what does this look like? What does the conceptual plan look like? And, you know, as we were scoping for this project, you know, this is kind of our first shot at thinking through what will this document look like? Um, we're envisioning and per the RFP that we told the board to put out, uh, this is a concise document, maybe 20 to 35 pages, accompanied by the web map. So we envision the web map potentially being the first stopping point for the public. Um, the conceptual plan having a little bit more detail. If the public wants to go in and dive into that detail, it would be available in the 20 to 35 page document. And these are the chapters that we envision the conceptual plan containing um, an introduction about the Utah Lake Authority and the mission. Um, chapter two, summarizing the results of the first workshop. Chapter three, um, and looking at the current issues and management gaps around Utah Lake. So that's kind of the work that um, Julie, you were talking about. Chapter four, goals and objectives. This will be defined by the planning team um, during that second workshop. Chapter five really talks about the future management priorities. What are the potential solutions that we could identify to, to meet those goals and objectives? Um, and that will be, again, just a framework because in the full plan, we'll be looking at um, prioritizing those solutions and that making sure that they're not just um, shovel ready projects, but shovel worthy projects and kind of check all the boxes for are they going to be, are they going to be feasible? Are they going to um, be effective? Um, are they affordable? What additional funding do you need? So kind of evaluating the feasibility of implementing them. Chapter seven, again, will be the metrics for success. Indicated indicators for how we monitor if those solutions are are being put into practice, and then chapter eight will be um, a discussion or around the adaptive management component. So, what's the planning horizon, and how often do we update the plan, and kind of just the framework established for for thinking through um, the planning horizon. So, 
but we wanted to put this in front of you um, to get your reactions because um, potentially, and we'll get into this in a second, you know, one of the risks of the project is, is you know, missing the marks with this conceptual plan in terms of not meeting your expectations as a, as a planning group um, and then making sure it has the right level of detail to check the box for a conceptual plan that's achievable for our group and for your group in the time, the limited time that we have. So maybe we can just open it up and get reactions to this general outlining and concept of the conceptual plan. I like the resolution. Is it missing anything? Is there anything glaring that we should be including in this that wouldn't fit into one of those categories? I think it's great. Does it follow a model of other plans you put together? Right? I mean, you, this is your first rodeo, so this would probably be a, a similar template, right? It, it has pieces of other planning projects that we've worked on, and then some are, are kind of custom for this project and, and to accommodate some of the requirements in the house bill and state of Ben from a uh, random housekeeping the the planning map so the utility mm -hmm. authority map is that getting is, is, are you on track to get that by the end of the year you can certainly provide a map that gives you the, <clears throat> the boundaries that are settled, but there's still a, a lot of outstanding boundaries that are. If you want to get it, well, we have a couple of programs that just need to be surveyed, and where the surveyors be, uh, we'll have that done before the end of the year. Uh, one with the American Board that's in the same boat, and then uh, we need to figure out how to handle the state park. Uh, but that should also be there by the end of the year. And then there's just one private landowner to. Uh, it might end up you know, being brought in for a little bit. That's a smaller parcel of land on the Hickory and Bates. That's where we are on the ground. Mm -hmm. But as far as the boundary goes, it should largely be intact. And the map is essentially finished. It just needs to be tweaked a little bit with the final finalizing statements. Mm -hmm. And then we can get a copy of the share file. Absolutely. If you want to just reach out to me, I can help you get the information. Yes. Great. Yeah. Scott, are we missing anything on this plan? No, I Okay, so questions, risks, and contingencies. Um, from a project management point of view, we generally at kickoff like to identify what some potential risks are up front and then talk about how we're going to mitigate those. Um, one of the biggest risks that we see is, is this schedule. So um, meeting this, this deadline of the April 1st, um, coordinating kind of a larger planning team, um, inventorying kind of some of the complex and, and many activities around the lake. Um, we see a, a contingency or a mitigating factor to that is just all of the, the pre-planning that our team has done over the last several weeks to develop this scope of work. Um, and really the scope kind of details, I don't know how many folks have been able to see the, the final scope of work or mostly final, but but what we've attempted to do is outline our approach and all of our assumptions that go into executing that scope of work and specific deliverables. Um, so there is a really clear roadmap to follow already uh, that our team has put together. Um, the assumptions in that scope of work kind of govern, you know, how we assume the work will be done and we can we can quickly go to those and, and talk about it. If, if we see that those, any of those assumptions aren't being met, that's an opportunity for the project management teams to come together. Um, the schedule contingency also is just, is just the fact that we're meeting at this kickoff meeting and having everybody kind of be in alignment about 
the expectation of the pace that we're going to be on, um, the requirements of the planning team, um, and and the participation and, and level of involvement needed. So there's a lot of work to be done from our point of view and from on our team side. Um, and there's a lot of input that we hope to get from this group and, and we already have, which is fantastic. So the another risk that we identified is, is this public perception of the process and public engagement. Um, we found in other projects that for successful implementation of a plan, we really need the public buy-in so that there's ownership there as well. And once we get to implementation, that the public feels like their voice has been heard and they're, they're not blindsided by a plan that was developed behind closed doors. And part of what we added to that scope of work were these um, multiple opportunities for public input through a survey, through open house meetings, um, two 30-day public comment periods. And additionally, you know, we hope to leverage your um, networks as well. So part of what we're gonna do is part of our first task is develop a, a communication strategy that we can share with each of you. And that way, as your ambassadors for the project with your constituencies, you can refer back to that communication strategy and have some talking points about what the plan is, what it isn't, you know, that it's it's going to be a public process. Um, it's not going to be developed in a vacuum. So we hope we can rely on the planning team as ambassadors of the project as well. So with the letter about the planning team, um, or a little bit after, we're going to we're going to share that communication strategy with you. Um, to hopefully just put up front um, in the public's eyes what this process is and what they can expect and when they can expect to see invitation for participation. Um, we also, as a contingency for, for this kind of public reaction, um, we have the, the House bill and the state code that really governs, you know, what is required and, and when the public can be involved. So all of that has already kind of been discussed and, and approved through the legislature. So that really is, you know, to a certain degree, we're, we're following what's in that House bill. We're not going, um, we're not deviating from that except to potentially add more opportunity to the public. Um, and then for questions, I think we already talked about you know, what's the, the minimum viable product that can serve as the conceptual plan, but you know, certainly that's a risk too, is that either our our team is not in alignment with what your vision is for the conceptual plan. So I think it's been really good conversation for us to talk about what that looks like you know, to make sure that as we embark on the work that we're we're doing, you know, what what's the vision for that conceptual plan. Um, and then come April 1st, we don't have to hopefully redo your scramble to do anything to make sure it was a check step process. So, any additional risks that this group can identify for the project? Any yeah. other As we have time to think about it, we can email you if that's good. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so, I guess this is maybe just a prompt slide to, to get to that um, catalog of the existing management activities that we really see as a step after the vision and the mission workshop. But with that said, given that it would be a process of potentially um, compiling and soliciting information filed and such that I you know, just put this on the radar. Um, so what what are you aware of and, and who are the individuals we should be in touch with to get information we need and uh, we we have our own familiarity but we'll definitely rely on this group for your your all of your knowledge and 
the Kubernetes uh, utilite.org site. They have a project page and it's a really good start at all the projects underway on the lake. And then we can work with you to kind of fill in gaps as well. Where we know we have an updated it. Yes, yeah. it's like ninety percent. There's a few that I know, but it'll get you a great start. Yeah. So there the post or is so now we have a app yeah. Um, so yeah, just want to wrap up now. I think we've really covered this. Hopefully, you're all feel comfortable with what our next steps are. Um, we're going to be following up on this meeting with that email related to really kind of describing the, the, the expectations around the planning team and getting them that that group established and, and scheduled out for this workshop. Um, well, presumably the, the, the two workshops actually. Um, and then you know, embark on what we just talked about, compiling data information. Um, and yeah, get me going. So excited to kind of be off and running now and appreciate everyone's time today and input. We thought it was some great conversation, discussion. So thanks for your time. Thank you. Real quick, board. I'm so sorry. It's a matter of time. First, we'll see the board member. My apologies. It's a technicality. We do have a couple of public present, both here and online. We just want to make sure if there was any public comment that if you're interested in either raising your hand if you're in person or online, raising your hand at the Zoom to let us know if there's something you want to make a public comment. So, yeah. I can see you. I don't see you. I think we'll take it. Thank you. Let's get you guys. We'll 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 get you guys